Hello everyone, I'm Stella from Stella's Yarn Universe. In this Amigurumi tutorial, I show you how to crochet this little pug. Um, many of you actually suggested that I design a pug um, in the past and I finally did it. I hope you like the result. I made one that's standing and one that's sitting. So you can choose which version you prefer. Um, so because he has a, a big chubby head, I had to put in a little stone just to balance it out so that he would stand. So you will need a little um, um, pebble or something that you may find on a walk outside if you want to make him standing. But if you actually like the sitting part, then you won't need that. And you can just use exactly the same pattern. All I did was just bend, just bend him down, bend his forelegs down this way. And this way, he just sits. So, your choice. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little project. Let's jump right in to the material section. So for this little project we need yarn in a DK or light worsted weight and I'm using 100% cotton yarn. This is Paintbox, Paintbox Yarns Cotton DK in coffee bean and banana cream. Sounds so delicious. <laughs> so I'll link to this yarn in the description box below in case you're interested. Then we need a 2.5 millimeter hook and that's something in between a B1 or a C2. So if you're somewhere in the world where um, this type of hook sizes are used, then you can just go by um, how tightly you crochet. If you already crochet quite tightly, then you can definitely go for a size C2. But if you tend to crochet more loosely, then I recommend going for a B1. And this beautiful hook I'm using for the first time now, it's, um, it's by a lovely shop on Etsy called Forget Me Not Meadow, in case you're interested. And I have a cute little matching stitch marker as well. So definitely check out her shop if you like this. I just love owls, so <laughs> I had to have it. So then we also, like I mentioned, uh, need a stitch marker and some fiber fill and safety eyes, unless you prefer embroidering the eyes. And these are seven millimeter safety eyes. And we also need a yarn needle and some black embroidery floss, but you could also use black yarn in the same weight, um, DK or light worsted that we're using for the project. That's up to you. And scissors, of course. And then this is something I'm gonna try. I haven't tried it in my trial um, pug, <laughs> but the thing is, um, his head turned out really big, but somehow I want to keep it that way. I, I like it him this way. I think it looks cute, but um, it's too heavy for him to stand. That's why he's sitting now. But um, we can try and make him stand by putting a little stone in the back. By the way, I forgot to sew on the tail, <laughs> but not to worry, we'll crochet the tail as well. So. Yeah, maybe we can balance it out with a little stone like this. I just got this for my garden, but maybe you can take a walk out in nature and maybe you find a little stone like this. So yeah, it's an experiment. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. If it won't, then maybe I'll just edit this out. <laughs> we'll see what happens. It's an experiment. So without further ado, let's get started with our little pug. 
We begin with the legs and for that we need the beige yarn. So we start with a magic ring and make sure to leave a fairly long tail end. When you're making the magic ring, we need that later. So this should definitely be enough. Maybe that's 20 centimeters. Yeah, 20 centimeters, eight inches. So you just use your preferred magic ring method. If you wanna learn how to use this one, there's a little tutorial for you in the, in the upper right corner. And now in round one, we single crochet eight in the magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now this long tail end, we just pull it through the magic ring so that it, it will be on the outside of the little leg under the little paw because that's where we need it later. And then we can close it, but I don't close the magic ring completely just yet. I just find it's easier to work in the first stitch of round two when it's not completely closed. So there's still a little gap there in between. Now in round two, we crochet in the back loops only. And so we start with two single crochet, so only in the back loops, one single crochet, and then one in the next. Now we're gonna decrease and as you know usually when we decrease we crochet two front loops together but now we're going to crochet two back loops together so there is a little trick to it that makes it super easy um, so first you insert your hook in the first back loop that's very easy and then to easily get it in under the second back loop, you just take advantage of the little hook shape here. So you get your hook in between the front and back loop there. And now we just turn our hook 180 degrees like this. And this way we easily get under the second back loop, which normally can be a little tricky. So now we just grab the yarn and pull it through one back loop. And now the second one may be a little tricky. We just really need to twist our hook to get it through there. And that's it. So now we just finish by picking up the yarn again and pulling it through the two remaining loops. And now we just repeat all these steps. So. One single crochet, two single crochet, and another decrease. And that's round two done. So now we can close the magic ring properly. And in round three and four, we simply single crochet in all six stitches. Now these, by the way, these are the four legs that we're crocheting. So the hind legs will be slightly different, but I'll show you then first. Let's start with the four legs. So one, two, 
去。Four, five, and six. So that's round three done, and now round four the same. One. Two, three, four, five, and six, and that's round four done. Now in round five, we start with two single crochet. One and two, and then we increase in the third stitch. So two single crochet in here, one and two, and then we single crochet in the next two, one in here. one in there and then we increase in the last stitch and that's four leg number one done well almost I'll show you what we do with this long yarn and later when we have all four legs so for now we can fasten off we don't need it uh, particularly long yarn end here so just cut that off there and that's for like number one done now we can go ahead and crochet the second one so uh, put whichever minute you need to go back to here and there's also a clickable timestamp in the description box below that will lead you to the beginning of the foreleg so now that we're done with the four legs, we crochet the hind legs next. And the first three rounds are exactly the same. So again, you can go to whichever minute I'm gonna put here or um, whichever I put in the description box below. And crochet the first three rounds exactly the same round four and five are different. So that's what I'm going to show you here. So in round four for the hind legs, we single crochet in the next two stitches. One and two. Then we increase in the third stitch. One and another one the same stitch and we repeat this once more single crochet single crochet and increase so now in round five we keep increasing this time we single crochet in the first three stitches, one, two, three, and in the fourth stitch we increase. So two single crochet in here, and we repeat this once more, single crochet number one, single crochet number two, single crochet number three, and increase. So one and another one in the same stitch. And that's the first hind leg done. So again, we can fasten off and it doesn't have to be a long yarn end here. 
pull it through and now we just need to make the second hind leg so maybe you already remember how we did it if not you can go back to the beginning of the four legs crochet around one two three and then go back to whichever minute I'm gonna put here for around four and five for the hind legs so now I'm going to show you what we do once we crochet all the legs. So this long tail end that we left in the beginning when we made the magic ring, we're just going to thread this on our yarn needle. And now we just want to define the paws a little better. So we're just going to make three little stitches. So if you have a look at you, at the leg, you can kind of see where the front would be. I mean, at least I, I think I can. So this here is the beginning of the round and here it ended, obviously. So that's kind of where I feel the back of the leg would be. So the opposite side is the front, obviously. And there, now I just make three stitches, one through here, one through here, one through here, to make it a bit, um, you know, to define the paws a little better, to squish this part together so that it looks more like little paws. And one stitch goes through here, and I stitch through to the center of the magic ring. This yarn needle is a little big for projects this small, but I lost my smaller one, I need a new one. So then close next to it, I'll make another stitch. And then close next to it. I make a final stitch. And now this part is a little bit more flat, so it looks more like a little paw. And once you've done that, you can just weave in this yarn and just follow the stitches, the, the you know, the natural flow of the stitches. And then we can just shorten this yarn and because it doesn't need to be so long. And you can hide it inside the leg. The legs don't need to be stuffed. So, but if you want, you can stuff them with this yarn end. And this may even help um, make our little puck stand up more securely. That's it. So once you've done that with all legs, we can move on with the belly. The belly we also crochet in beige and we started with three chains. So we make a little loop by making a slip knot and then we chain one, two, three. But we crochet the belly in a round as well. So now in round one, we start with one single crochet in the second chain counted from our hook. So in here, we make a single crochet. And here in the last chain, or the first one, we single crochet four. So one and two 
and then the other two go on the other side of the same chain. So I just keep the yarn end out of the way and two more single crochet in here. So that's four all together. Now we make three single crochet in the other side of the middle chain that we crocheted, already crocheted one stitch in. So just go in this gap here and single crochet three. Two and three. So now our round has eight stitches and here I like to start using my stitch marker so I don't get confused. So I just put it in the last stitch. Now in round two, we already start attaching the legs. So now we need all the little legs that we prepared and we begin with attaching the hind legs. So that's them. And now we have to imagine this is the belly and where my hook now is, that's the back. So if we want to attach the hind legs now, we should attach them this way so the little paw is facing toward the front, toward this side here. So somewhere here is where I should start. So I insert my hook here in the second last or third last stitch of the Round. It doesn't really matter where it is for you. Also, we can change it later if it doesn't look good. So we just single crochet in all 10 stitches all around the hind leg. Two and three. Once you reach the last stitch of the round for the leg, this stitch will probably loosen up once you crochet in it, so then you can pull the yarn end of the leg tight again to tighten this stitch, just to prevent any gaps. That's four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So now we crochet it all around the leg, and next. Let me just double check. Now we single crochet two in the belly. So in these two stitches here. One and two. And now you can have a look how the hind leg looks. Is it pointing in the right direction? So these three little stitches that we made indicate where the paw is pointing. So it's for me it's pointing slightly outward. But I think that's still that's still okay. I think that may actually be cute. So I just leave it that way. If 
it's pointing in the wrong direction, you can just undo these stitches and start attaching the leg at a different point and that will change it depending on which direction you want to turn the little paw. So now we attach the first front leg and the same way you want the paw to be facing forward. So I'll probably start here in the last stitch of the round for the leg. And so we just single crochet eight stitches all around the foreleg. And again, you may need to tighten the yarn end of the leg after crocheting in the last stitch of it. So that was one, this is two. Three. Oops. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, and now we single crochet in the next two stitches of the belly. Oops, so one in here, and one in here. Now we can double check if the Paw is facing in the right direction, and it seems it is. Yeah, that's. I think it's facing straight forward. The hind leg is facing a little outward, but I leave it that way. I just, I just try to match the other hind leg later on. So now we can attach the second foreleg, and again, it needs to point. The paw needs to point in the same direction. So I'll start joining it here and we'll see how that looks. So again, eight stitches around the foreleg. One. Two, three, four, five, six, right in the Yarn in there again. Seven and eight. Now we single crochet in the next two stitches again and here it looks a bit confusing so we already crocheted in this one so don't crochet in this one if it looks confusing for you as well here we can see that we already crocheted in it so this would be the next one here and these little gaps that form between the belly and the legs, we will close them later. So that's one, and then another single crochet in the next stitch. Now I need to check that the paw is facing in the right direction. Um, it's facing 
not really. <laughs> it's facing quite a bit inward now. So that gives me an opportunity to show you what to do if it happens for you. So this one is facing forward nicely. And this one is facing more in this direction. So I need to join the leg further toward the back. So we undo the stitches and I did join it here, but I should have joined it maybe here in this stitch, one stitch further toward the back. So let's try this. So here and this one this time. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now in the belly, again, careful not to crochet in this one. One and two in there. Now let's see how it looks. And yes, that looks great. So they're both facing forward now. So we only have one leg to go, second hind leg. Now we're on the other side. So this is the front and this is the back. So the paw should be facing this way. So I'll just try to start here. I think that's what I did with the other one. And that made it face forward but slightly outward. So I'm trying to copy that to make it look symmetrical. So 10 stitches around the second hind leg. That's two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, and 10. And now we crochet in the next, next and last two stitches of the belly. So I remove the stitch marker here. One, and two. So now our round has 44 stitches and in round three, we'll decrease a lot. So we start with a de decrease right away. By the way, I'm calling this a row, uh, round three, but we could actually call it round eight because the, the legs 
around one to five and now we're at round three of the body so um, we start with a decrease there we go so now we're doing the regular invisible decrease that we use for amigurumi if you're new to this method i have a little tutorial that i link to in the upper right corner if you want to watch that so i was here so first a decrease now we single crochet in the next six stitches one two three four five and six then we decrease once more Now we single crochet in the next two stitches. One and two. Decrease again. So this is the next little stitch. In this round, you can easily miss little stitches it happened to me the first time so now i'm being extra careful not to skip any stitches now we single crochet in the next four stitches one two three and Oops, we have lots of yarn ends here, so try to keep them out of the way. That's four. Then we have another decrease. Now we have two single crochet. One and two then another decrease oops this is again a super tiny stitch here between the bunny and legs that's where the stitch is maybe extra small that's the decrease then now for a single crochet one, two, three, and four. Then decrease. There we go. Two single crochet. That's one. And two. Decrease. Can you hear the pigeons? <laughs> It's another tiny stitch here, so carefully. Make a decrease here. Now we single crochet in the next six stitches. One, two, three, 
four, five, and six. Let's see, now we should have four stitches left. That's right, okay. So now we have one last decrease. And two single crochet. That's one and two. And now our round is reduced to 36 stitches. And that was quite a tricky round, but for now it's getting easier. So let's continue with round nine. Now for the next three rounds, we simply single crochet in all 36 stitches. So we have no decreases or increases to make. So you can pause the video here and hit play once you crocheted all three rounds. Round 9, 10 and 11. My three rounds of 36 single crochet are complete now. And before we continue crocheting, we'll just close these little gaps here if necessary. Mm, yeah, maybe better to close them. Also this gap here in the in the middle. So I'll just secure my stitch with the stitch marker. And now we can use our little yarn end here to close these gaps. So we take our yarn needle and thread the first one and then we just stitch through to the outside. Try to go further in this direction, closer to the little gap. And then I'll just close it with maybe two stitches. I think that will be enough already. And then we can just weave in the yarn in for a bit. Just to secure everything. And that's it. The rest we can hide inside the body. Now, moving on to the next one. We just repeat this with all of them. So I'll just leave you to it so this video doesn't get endless. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you know what to do, but if not, you can always let me know if you have any questions about any particular part. So you can hit pause here and once you close all the gaps, you can hit play once again. All the little gaps between the legs and body are closed now. So now I'm just closing the gap in the middle. So 
the yarn and that we started the belly with. That's what I threaded on my yarn needle now. So now I'm just gonna close this last gap or these two little gaps here. Doesn't really matter which way, whichever way you think works best, depending how, depending on how it looks for you. And then when it's closed, then we just weave in this yarn and with a few stitches. Mine is a bit short, so. It's getting a little tricky. There we go, that should be fine. So, we'll just hide all of these yarn ends inside the body. And now we can continue with round 12. So in round 12, we start, oh, we continue decreasing and also we divide the body in the back and the neck part. So for now, we focus on the back and so we start with 12 single crochet. Or actually, we don't decrease yet. <laughs> Sorry, I looked at the wrong line. So we divide, what we do is we divide the um, back from the neck. So to do that, we start with 12 single crochet. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. Now this part here is the front and we will leave that now and skip these stitches and instead we'll make a few chains and then continue crocheting from here so that there will be a hole out of which we will crochet the neck later on. But for now we focus on the back so we chain six now. One, two, three, four, five, six, and we skip 12 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. If this is uh, more or less the middle, like the center between the um, two forelegs, then you're all good. If it was here, it would be better, but it's fine. It's more or less the center. I think this looks like the center stitch. If not, you may need to um, shift the stitches a bit. So maybe 12 stitches here are too many for you. Maybe you need fewer, let's say 10 or whatever, depending on, um, on your tension and so many things. So, the sixth stitch, I mean, the between the sixth and seventh stitch, that should be 
more or less in the front center. Um, I'll show you later why. So I think for me it's fine this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then we continue with the thirteenth stitch, which is this one here. And we single crochet in the rest of the round, which is in my case 12 stitches. So let's just do two to secure it. And then I'm just going to show you exactly what I meant. That's three. So now it's secured. So if we look at it this way, this is the front and this is the back of our little pug. And of course we want this hold here for the neck to be a nice and centered in the front. So for me, it looks okay. So if you look at it this way, you're looking at the front of the park now. And what I meant is this line should be more or less straight, like horizontal. For me, it's a little bit you know, a little pointing upward, but I think that's fine because if I if I did eleven stitches and started the neck here, then it would be pointing slightly downward. So, you know, it would just be the same thing. So for, I think if yours looks like this, you're all good. That's fine. You can later crochet the neck out of here. But if it's completely crooked like this, then it means you need less stitches on this side, then start the neck by making six chains and skipping 12 stitches here, and then just single crochet in the remaining stitches. Or if it's like, um, if it's pointing downward this way, then you need more stitches on this side. And then you have fewer on this side. I hope that makes sense. So it's just important that this hole for the neck is more or less centered in the front. You know, it should be where the front legs are. So that was the third stitch and now nine more stitches to go for me. Just, we just single crochet in all the remaining stitches of the round. And that's round 12 done. So in the next round we start or we continue with our decreases. So we start with a decrease. And then we single crochet in the next two stitches. One, and two, then we repeat this two more times, decrease, one and two and decrease oops one 
and two. Now we single crochet in the six chains here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and now we're on the other side here and here again we decrease And single crochet two, one, and two. Just had to detangle my yarn. And as we did on the other side, we repeat this two more times. Decrease. one and two and decrease and one and two. Now our round has 24 stitches. And in round 14, we begin with a decrease again. And then we single crochet in the next stitch. And we repeat this two more times. Decrease and single crochet. And once more, Oops. decrease and single crochet. Now we single crochet in the back loops of the next six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we continue with a decrease. One single crochet and repeat twice more, decrease single crochet and Decrease single crochet. Now our round has 18 stitches, and in the next round, we single crochet one and then we decrease one. And this time we repeat this 
six times all together. So five more times. That's a single crochet. And one decrease. So at this point it helps um, for me at least to squish the project together to make the decreases. One single crochet and one decrease. That's the third repetition. One single crochet. And one decrease. Especially with the decreases, if you press the stitches against your um, middle finger, then it's easier to get the hook through the Round loops. So that's petition number four. One single crochet. And decrease. And once more. One single crochet and one decrease. There we go, that's our round complete. Now we only have one round to go for the back. And in this last round, we simply decrease six times. So we start here, one, two, Three, four, Five, oops, yarn split alert, and once more, six. So now we can fasten off, and I leave the yarn end a little longer so that I can. Close the round and comfortably weave in the yarn end. So just thread it on your yarn needle. And now we just go through the front loop of each of these six stitches. One, two, Three, four, five, and six. Now pull tight, and now we go through the center of the round, stitching inward and pull so that the back gets even out and 
there so that there's no bump or anything. And then we just weave in the yarn end for with a few stitches. Trying to follow the pattern, the single crochet pattern to make it not too obvious. And the rest of the yarn and we can just hide inside the body. So now we continue with the neck, but before it's time for my little experiment, which I hope will work. Otherwise I have to somehow edit this video or future Stella has to come in to tell you not to do this. But my plan is to insert this stone and push it as far to the back as possible. Um, no, I probably, depending on your stone, I mean, I, I try to pick a nice and smooth stone that doesn't have any edges or anything. It's nice and round and smooth. It's oval, but you know, it has a smooth surface and no weird, and not a weird shape that may mess with my little pug shape. So on top here, I will put in a little fiber fill later though. My plan is that the back gets quite heavy. So I guess if I let him stand now that he will fall, oh no, he doesn't fall over. Okay, so my hope is that with this stone that's more toward the back, that it will be able to balance out this heavy head. <laughs> I tried making the head smaller to reduce the weight, but I didn't like it. I like the big head somehow. It looked, it looked cute, cuter to me, so yeah keeping the big head and hopefully this works if not then we'll just um we'll just make a sitting little pug which is also cute <laughs> so now with this little stone in there if you have a stone and if you want to do this experiment with me if not just make a sit sitting pug which is just as cute and in that case, you can start filling the body with fiber fill, but you can also wait a little because um, there'll still be an opening for the neck that you can fill through. So we will rejoin the beige yarn now. So I'm making a slip knot to create a little loop. Set that aside. And now here in the corner, that's where I will rejoin the yarn. So I just insert my hook here. And then I pop this little loop on my hook and pull it through. So now we single crochet 18 stitches, starting with the next one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, 
11 12 and the remaining six stitches we crochet out of the other side of this chain that we made to separate the back from the neck so here in the corners we will naturally have small gaps don't worry about them because when we sew on the head we will close them at the same time so I'll just let's see where they'll go one two three four five six So the first one goes through this gap here. One. Two, I mean this is 14 actually. Fifteen. Not so e easy with this stone in there. <laughs> Sixteen. I always try to catch two loops if possible. Seventeen and eighteen. Just put my stitch marker in the last stitch. Now in round thirteen, we stick to our eighteen stitches. So we single crochet in the next 12. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And now we only crochet in the front loops of the remaining six stitches. Again, not easy with this stone in there, but it's doable. One, oops, two, three. So, as with the decreases, if the stitch is pressed against your finger, I find it much easier to get under the front loop for five 
five and six. So we're just trying to get this excess skin <laughs> creases that are so typical for them. So that's the round complete. Now, actually, we don't need the stitch marker anymore for now because we don't crochet in rounds anymore. We just slip stitch in the first stitch of the round. Then we chain one and now we crochet in the other direction. Also, we can hide this yarn in inside so that it doesn't bother us anymore. And now we crochet in the other direction and once again we single crochet only in the front loops of these six stitches. So This is the actual first stitch. The other one was the slip stitch we made, so. One. Two, three, four, five. and six and then we slip stitch in the back loop or sorry the front loop of the next stitch here just to finish and now the body is done we just leave an extra long yarn end to Later, so on the head, once we've done it, pull that through, and that's the little body done. So now we can go ahead and fill it with fiber fill, either fill it with fiber fill completely if you're making a sitting little part like this, it would be sitting like this. <laughs> or if you're doing the, the experiment with the stone. <laughs> Just wondering if that's heavy enough, but we'll see. <laughs> so, Sometimes I don't have enough time to test everything and I just want to, you know, get the pattern out to you so you can all try it. And yeah, then we just have to experiment together. But that's what I did with the, with my rooster that was completely improvised and so many people seem to enjoy the pattern. So... That's a really good thing. So I was thinking I just keep it this way, but 
I don't overthink things or test things so so many times that would just delay everything I thought it was okay just get it out to you and this way you can all make your own experiments with it so usually I push the fiber fill in with the back of my hook now I have my fancy owl hook which is a little too big to do that <laughs> so I'm using my little scissors carefully so the body is filled firmly now so nicely stuffed and <laughs> it looks so cute and shabby already so we can set it aside for now and continue with the head this is future Stella <laughs> jumping in just to tell you that you need a piece of yarn I'd say at least 30 centimeters um, 12 inches but um, maybe even longer like 40 centimeters 16 inches and we need that for the face later but we won't have finished the head when we need it so if you don't cut it now then you won't have anywhere to cut it from um, unless you you know want to cut it from the head and then rejoin it which is annoying so <laughs> just jumping in to tell you we need a long piece of yarn for later so you can cut it off bef before we start with the head and then we'll be good to go so we begin with the magic ring again. And in round one, we single crochet six in the magic ring. Two. Three, four, five, six. Close the magic ring, but not too tightly yet. In round two, we increase in all six stitches. So two in here. in the next two in the third two in the fourth two in the fifth and two in the sixth Stitch. So now our round has 12 stitches and we can tighten the magic ring now. Just be careful with this if you're using acrylic yarn because it's not as robust as cotton yarn so don't accidentally break your yarn. Now in the next round we single crochet single crochet in the first stitch and increase in every other stitch so we repeat this six times in total five more times single crochet increase single crochet increase single crochet increase oops 
single crochet increase and once more single crochet and increase let's see is that right yes so now our round has 18 stitches in round four we join the beige yarn so I prepare a little loop with the beige yarn and in the first stitch we change to beige so we pull the yarn through the brown yarn and then we complete the single crochet in beige so then I pull the beige loop on my hook and put it through the two loops so now we changed color to beige and then we single crochet in the next two stitches one and two now we crochet in the front loops only and we increase in the front loop of the next stitch so two single crochet in there and then we single crochet in the front loops of the next two stitches there we go one single crochet and a second single crochet and now we repeat this series of stitches four times so three more times increase in the front loop only and two single crochet also in front loops only one and two then again increase in the front loop of the next stitch and two single crochet in the front loops Oops. and once more increase in the front loop of the next stitch and two single crochet in the next two front loops there we go so let's see oh now we have three stitches left and we just make single crochet stitches in the full stitch front and back loop one two three and that's the round complete now in round five we single crochet in the next three stitches one two three and now for the next 16 stitches we only crochet in the back loops so one two three four five six seven 
eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fifteen, sixteen, and then we single crochet in the full stitches of the remaining three stitches of the round. One, two, and three, so now in round six we start with three single crochet again, one, two, three, and now we crochet in the front loops only, so we make an increase in the next front loop. Two in there. Then single crochets in the next three front loops. One, two, three. Then another increase, and single crochets in the next two front loops. Then we crochet in the full stitches or in the full stitch here one single crochet and one increase also in both front and back loop two in the same stitch and now we continue in the front loops only again so in the next three front loops we single crochet one two three and then we increase in the next front loop and single crochet stitches in the next three front loops. And now we have three stitches remaining and we'll just single crochet in all of them. One, two, and three. Oh, by the way, we can cut off the brown yarn. <laughs> And now our round has 26 stitches. So in round seven, we start with six single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we crochet in the back loops only for the next six stitches. 
one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we increase in the full stitch, two in here, then we single crochet one and increase again, all in the full stitches, front and back loop. Now in back loops only for the next six stitches again, one, oops, two, three, four, five, and six and then we single crochet in the full stitches of the remaining five stitches oops that was one that's two three four and five, so now our round has 28 stitches and in round eight we start with six single crochet again in both front and back loop one, two, three, four, five, six. Now in the front loops only, we single crochet in the next six stitches, in the next six front loops. That's two, three, four, five, six, and then we increase in the next front loop. And then we single crochet in the next three stitches in both front and back loop one two and three and now again in the front loops only increase in the next one and then single crochet in the next six One, two, oops, three, four, five, six, and then single crochet in the full stitches for the rest of the round. So that should be five. One, two, three, four, and five, oops,
Now in round nine, once again, we start with the six single crochet in both front and back loop. Two, three, four, five, six. Now in the back loops only, we single crochet in the next eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then in the next three single crochet, we work in both front and back loops. One, two, three. And for the next eight stitches in the back loops only again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, in the next five stitches, we crochet in both front and back loop. One, two, three, four, and five, In round 10, we simply crochet, single crochet in all 30 stitches. So just one in each. Twenty-nine and thirty. So now we crochet the eye patches in brown. And we start with a magic ring. And then in the magic ring, we make three single crochet. One, two, three. Then we chain one make one double crochet two single crochet one chain and one double crochet And that's it. Then we leave a long enough yarn end to sew the eye patch on. Pull that through. And now we close the ring a, li a little bit, but we leave plenty of space because now we already insert the safety eyes in the center here the center of the magic ring and once it's inserted we fully close the magic ring and now 
all that's left to do is make a little invisible finish. So we thread this yarn end on our yarn needle. And we insert it in the second stitch of the round. So we skip the first one, insert it in the second stitch under both front and back loop, pull that through. And now we insert it in between front and back loop of the last stitch of the round. Just stitch through there and pull that tight. And now we have a neat finish that just looks like it's not really clear where the round begins and where it ends. So that's what we're trying to achieve. So then we repeat this for the other eye and then we can sew the eye patches on. So you can go back to whichever minute I'm going to put here to crochet the other eye patch. And then when you're ready, we take back our head and just comparing. So here where we crocheted in both stitches for all these rounds, that's kind of the forehead, so to speak. And yeah, so the patches go here where these kind of eyebrow-like um, front, uh, front loops that show where they are. So they will go somewhere here. And the corner, so we want the, yeah, so this I'm going to use as the left eye or the right eye, but from my side it's the left eye. And I'm just going to try and insert the safety eye here just because it's very difficult to insert, especially because I'm using cotton yarn and I crochet super tightly. So I just broaden the gap a little carefully without um, damaging any of the fibers, just so that I get it in more easily. And we want one of these corners where we made the double crochet. We want one on top, you know, toward the forehead and one here on the side. Yeah, I think that's right. At least that's what I did last time, I think. So now, Let's just see, maybe it helps if I let you know where I placed them. So I placed them between round one, two, three, four, five, six, between round six and seven with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches space in between. And four of those stitches are made up of increases. I hope that helps. So now we just have to sew them on. And before you do that, you can still experiment with the patches in which way they look best. So we just sew them on. 
all around. This other yarn and we'll also sew on in a bit. So I just go through the outer round here. And just sew the sew the patch on stitch by stitch. And I try to bring out those edges. Because they always look a bit concerned, don't they? <laughs> That's kind of their face expression. So here I'm just trying to accentuate the, this little corner, so I just pull that up a little bit, the stitch. To bring out that corner. So now this patch is sewn on all around and the other yarn end I'll just stitch that through so that I can tie them both together and I'm going to hide that as best as I can. So now we have both yarn ends on the inside of the head and here we can just tie them together to secure them and either hide the yarn ends inside the head or cut them short. And that's it. Now we can just repeat the same steps with the other side. Now we need our little yarn end that we set aside in the beginning. To make a few stitches to make <laughs> the face extra wrinkly and cute. So first let's make a few stitches here between the eyes. So I insert my hook or stitch through from the inside out. Um, after this round, after the round that um, that we crocheted in the back loops, so that's round one, two, three, four, five, between round five and six. And then I stitched through three rounds higher where the eye patches on the and the upper edge of the eye patches. And now we just need to secure this with a few stitches. So try to hold it in place. Now, how did that happen? Brown yarn and <laughs> just cut that off. 
So the stitches need to be really tight so that it gets that both these sides get sewn together somehow. And then once you're happy with the result, you can cut this off and tightly tie the yarn ends together so that everything holds its shape. So now we have a little knouchy face. <laughs> you can repeat this here under the eyes as well, but I think I'll just leave it like that. So now we can secure the safety eyes. So I'll just put these thingies on. That's one. And two. And now we can finish crocheting the head. So from here, we start decreasing. So we single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three, and then we decrease. And we repeat this five more times. One, two, three, decrease. One, two, three, decrease, and that's a halfway point three more times. And decrease one, two, three. And one last time. One, two, three, and decrease.
now before we continue we can start filling the head with fiber fill just to make sure that it's evenly distributed between the eyes and around them that will just help give the head a nice shape that's enough for now so we can fill it more after crocheting the next round so in the next round we keep decreasing this time we single crochet in the first two stitches and then we decrease and we repeat this six times all together so five more times two single crochet and one decrease And one last time. One and two and and decrease. There we go. So now we can add a little more fiber fill. Now, when I'm crocheting the next round, I push the fiber fill in with my middle finger to make sure I don't work it into the stitches. So in the next round, we single crochet one, and then we decrease. And again, we repeat this six times together so five more times single crochet and decrease single crochet and decrease number three single crochet and decrease number four oops
five and one last time. Single crochet and decrease. So now it's the last chance to add any more fiber fill. I think that's enough. So now we can move on to the last round for the head, in which we will make six decreases in a row. So at this point, I find it easier to just squish the head together, we just need to be careful with the fiber fill and trying carefully not to work it in the stitches. That's number two. Push this back in. Four. Five. And six. So that's the last round done. Now we just cut off the yarn and we'll close the round. So now We'll need our yarn needle and as we did for the back, we insert our hook now in the front loops of each of the six stitches. Pull that tight, then stitch through the center of the last round and weave in the yarn end. So I do that somewhere under the chin where it won't be as visible. I'm just trying to make the back of the head as even as possible. 
and then we just weave this yarn end in with a few stitches and we'll be using the long yarn end that we left for the neck to sew on the head But we, before we sew on the head, we crochet the ears. So for that, we need the brown yarn again. So we start by leaving a long end for sewing the ears on. It doesn't have to be too long. I leave it at about 20 centimeters, eight inches. Then we make a slip knot to make a little loop because the ears are crocheted in rows. And we start with four chains. Then in row one, we single crochet three. So we start here in the second chain, count it from our hook. One, two, and three. Then we chain one and turn. In row two, we also single crochet three, so one in each stitch. One, two, and three. Chain one and turn. In row three, we skip the first stitch and only single crochet in the last two stitches one and two chain one and turn in row four we skip the first stitch again and only crochet one in the second stitch chain one and turn and then in the next row we only single crochet one now we crochet all around the ear so we start by crocheting in the side of each row so that will be five stitches for five rows the first one goes in the very same stitch that we just crocheted in because this row consists of one stitch only so that's one and then we work our way down two three four, five. Next, we single crochet in the other side of this three base chains. So that means another single crochet in the same stitch, but this time from the bottom side that is now facing upward. And then two in the next base chain and three. And now we crochet back up five stitches. The first one goes in the same stitch that we already crocheted in. Then in the side of each row, it's two, three, four, and five. Now, we fasten off with an invisible finish, but not the usual way. It's almost like what I showed you for the brown eye circles, but this time we do it differently. So that time we skip the first stitch to simulate the first stitch, stitch over it, and we inserted our, our needle in the second stitch. But this time we create something that looks like an additional stitch so we just go in we go under the front and back loop of the first stitch of this round here go through there and then we stitch through the front and back loop of the last stitch and this way it looks like a neat round without start and finish 
and this looks like just another stitch although it, it isn't and this just prevents there from being too much tension and that helps the ears look more pointy rather than round so now we just need to weave in this yarn end because we'll use the other one for sewing. And that's ear number one done. Now you can go back to whichever method I'm gonna put here and there's also going to be a clickable timestamp if you open the description box below. So go ahead and crochet the second ear and then we'll attach the ears together. Now we can go ahead and attach the ears. So we just thread them on our yarn needle. If you like you can pin them in place first. Um, I'll just attach them without pins because I I know where I'd like them to be, I think. So I'm just counting from the back of the head because it's easier. One, two, three, four rounds. And then between round four and five or on round five, I think you could say, that's where I'm going to attach them. And I want to leave one, two, three, four, five stitches space in between them so if this is the center stitch then one two three and that's it so I'll just go through here stitch through round five and then I'll just stitch back through the ear and this way I just work myself down down the base of the ear until it's firmly attached so through the head and back through the ear and I just make sure that I always stitch through under round five so that it doesn't suddenly go somewhere else and this way it should look quite neat Now you can check if you're happy with the placement. I think that's looking good. Now I'll just attach, just to help the ear stay in place the way I want it to. I just wanna attach the tip of the ear with one little stitch to the head just so that it stays where I want it to be. So I will just weave in the yarn end toward the tip of the ear
that's close enough. So now I'll just fold the ear over and have a look where I want it to go. And that's where I'll make a little stitch through the head. Oops. <laughs> then if I'm happy with how that looks, then I just stitch back through the ear. And now I just weave in the yarn end just to secure this last little stitch. Just with a few stitches. Trying to follow the pattern of the stitches. Until I feel that the stitch is firmly secured and then I just finish by stitching toward the inside of the ear and that's where I cut my yarn and short. And then we just need to repeat this with the other ear. So now we can sew the head on and now I will use some pins just to see if my experiment with that stone weight <laughs> worked. So I'll pin it in place first and see if it worked because the thing is, if I want it to be standing, I place the head this way, but if he would be ending up sitting because it didn't work, then I would um, sew it on a different way, slightly different way. So. We'll see, we'll see. I just put two pins in. And now comes the moment of truth. <laughs> Yay, it's working! <laughs> so that's good news. So then you can just look at the little pug from each side to make sure the head is in the right position. Could go more toward the, the side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's looking good to me. So now we can sew on the head. So we just read this long yarn end and then we just sew it on all around. So one stitch goes through the head and I try to make it as close to the neck as possible or even inside the neck just so we don't have any too obvious stitches showing. Oops, there we go. So one stitch through the head and then the next stitch goes through the neck again and I just insert I just make one stitch per um, stitch of the neck. So there, I think there were 18 stitches. So just make, I'll just make 18 stitches all around. So one through the head, just 
place this pin somewhere else for now so that it's not in the way and then through the next stitch of the neck always pull pulling the yarn in nice and tightly and this way we sew all around so you can pause the video here oops and once you work your way all around the head you can hit play and then we can just take a look and see if we need to sew another round or if the head is firmly attached so the head is attached now and one round was enough for me um, you could do another round if you think it needs to be more firmly attached but I think one round is fine for me and then I was just um, so in the zone that I forgot to hit record <laughs> because I used the same yarn and to close these little gaps that we had here on this side and here so you can just weave in the yarn and and at the same time use it to close the little gaps that we had on each side and then just cut the yarn in short and that's the head done so now all that's left to do is the little tail and for that we'll need the beige yarn again we need a long enough yarn and to sew it on it doesn't need to be too long for the tail and then we make a loop and we chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if you want the tail to be a little bit curly um, at the tip, then you can single crochet one in the second chain and then single crochet two in the next chain. And then again one in the next and two single crochet in the next. So now it's curling a little bit. And in the last two chains here we just make one single crochet each. And then we just cut off the yarn, fasten off. And all that's left to do is sew on the tail. So then we just find the right place for it. Oops. So just thread one of the yarn ends and you want this curly part to curl forward, I would say. And then we just find the right place. And again, you can pin it in place before sewing it on just to check from all sides how it looks. And that's where I have the little stone in there, so I need to pin it this in this direction. <laughs> Be careful not to poke yourself with the pin. So let's see. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the right place. So now We'll just 
stitch through the body, you know, similar, similar technique that we used for the ears. Just make a little stitch there, then stitch back through the tail and through the body again. Now I can get rid of the pin. Stitch back through the tail. And through the body again. And then we just weave in this first yarn end. There are any gaps left you can close them now using this yarn end and then when it's properly woven in just cut it very very short and now the other one, and that will help the, to properly attach the tail once this yarn end is woven in. Okay, that's looking good. Just double checking again, and then we just weave in this second yarn end. And then that's it. So our little pug is complete now. <laughs> Whether you made a standing little pug or a sitting little pug, I hope you enjoyed this Amigurumi tutorial. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so, so much for your time. Thank you for crocheting along with me and for choosing to use my pattern. I so appreciate it. If you enjoyed this pattern, um, feel free to give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed it because then if you turn on notifications, you won't miss any of my future crochet tutorials. So thank you so, so much again. See you soon. Happy crocheting.